I've been shooting primarily JPEG lately. While there are a few exceptions, at the present time, most of the photos I take are simply unedited JPEGs straight out of the camera, maybe cropped a bit. I know a lot of people say you should shoot RAW all the time, or even RAW and JPEG, but I feel some might be making it a bigger deal than it really needs to be. There's pros and cons to both sides. To get it out of the way, a lot of this comes down to personal preference, and each person will have different opinions and use cases. In my opinion, I find the colors of JPEGs processed in camera to be pleasing enough. I will edit some photos, usually because of my habit of underexposing, but I generally tend to like images with minimal processing. What I use my photos for also doesn't require shooting in RAW. In fact, it's easier to just shoot JPEG for my purposes. So colors straight out of the camera look fine to me. That means I can also skip the editing step, streamlining my workflow. After shooting a couple hundred photos and getting them on my computer, all I have to do is delete blurries, find the keepers, then sort them into respective folders. I try my best to frame shots in camera without the need to crop, but if I do crop, it's usually just when sharing or posting. Even then, I always keep the full resolution image. It is true that JPEGs can't be pushed very far in post, and RAW photos provide greater flexibility for color, tint, and white balance adjustments along with much higher dynamic range thanks to being able to recover some details from the shadows. It's more important to nail exposure in camera when not shooting RAW. That is a con for JPEGs, but as I barely edit, it is far outweighed by some of the other pros for me. I use an older camera body, and an entry level one at that. Speed priority continuous shooting mode brings blistering burst rates of 3.3 FPS, and a 15 shot buffer for large fine JPEG. I know, impressive. While I'd like more shots per second, the buffer hasn't been an issue in this mode. Switch over to raw continuous to lose a third of your speed with a buffer that needs to catch its breath every couple steps. The speed outweighs the flexibility in post for me. With a correctly set exposure, I have more chances to get the shot with less downtime waiting for buffers to clear. Related to the last point, it's not just my camera that appreciates processing JPEGs. Smaller file sizes are also more friendly on my aging 2012 laptop. Never really having much of a photo collection before getting this camera, I've honestly surprised myself with just how much space my photos that I just put in folders are taking up. And relatively speaking, I only have a tiny amount. I really should find something to do with the photos so they aren't just sitting there collecting e-dust. I began shooting in JPEG. As I improved and got more comfortable, I started shooting in RAW and playing around a lot more with trying to find editing styles I liked. I've now returned to mostly shooting JPEG straight from camera. Mostly do to the overall simplicity of it. I enjoy taking photos more than editing. I don't see the point for me to attempt to manually process photos in a true-to-life way when I'm happy enough with the processing the camera does for me. There are exceptions though. While the benefits of speed will outweigh raw processing for me when it comes to genres like wildlife and bird photography, but that doesn't really stay true when trying to take landscape photos. Even then, I still tend to shoot a lot of JPEG. However, there are those times that I really want to be able to pull out that extra bit of detail in the shadows, or recover some of the highlights. I wouldn't say to shoot only RAW or JPEG 
unless it's specifically required. Instead, try a both. See which one fits your use case better, and which one you like the look of. Everyone will have their own taste for how far they process their photos, and there isn't really a right or wrong way. Instead of worrying about that, just use what works best for you, and enjoy the process. That's it for today's video, and until next time, thanks for watching.